Hi there, today we're going to look at a brief history of the culinary arts. The purpose of this lesson is to show you a little bit of how culinary arts have evolved over time. There's much more to know and you could learn more about each one of the times that we'll look at. Gastronomy. This is a word you will see a lot. Gastronomy is really the word astronomy with a G on the front. And gastronomy is the practice or art of choosing, cooking, and eating good food. So you might say the cooking of a particular area might be the traditional American gastronomy. But when did modern restaurants appear? It's said that modern food service began a little after 1750. In France at that time, food production was controlled by guilds. Now a guild is a medieval association of craftsmen or merchants. Uh, they often have a lot of power. Now it also could be an association of people uh, that get together for mutual aid to help each other or pursue a common goal. Like this would be a guild of all the bakers in town get together and form a guild. So guild in France, caterers, pastry makers, roasters, and pork butchers held licenses to prepare specific items. They had to get a license to do it. An innkeeper, in order to serve a meal to guests, had to buy the various menu items from those operations that were licensed to provide them. They had to get bread from the baker guild. Guests that were staying at the inn had little or no choice and simply ate what was given to them. Then in 1765, a Parisian boulanger, that is baker, sta started serving soups. So at his bakery, he added soups. He called those soups restoratives. And that's where the word restaurant comes from, from restoratives. And what they mean by restorative is that it was supposed to make you feel stronger. Before the French Revolution in 1789, chefs worked for the nobility or royalty. They didn't work on their own. They mostly worked as a cook at a private home of a wealthy person. After the revolution, the chefs had to work for somebody else. So they, many of them just started their own restaurants to make a living. And also the new government of France got rid of the guild system that told people what they could make. So then people could do anything that they wanted. Before the revolution, there were only 50 restaurants, but 10 years later, there was 500 restaurants. Modern restaurants started to happen in the 1800s. You know, most of the places that you went to only served the dishes of the day. Okay, so you couldn't order off the menu. You just ate what they were going to cook that day. You had no choice. Later on, menus were created and you could order what you wanted from the menu, and that's called a la carte. Something that happened that also helped was the invention of the kitchen stove. So before they had kitchen stoves like this, um, it was harder to control the fire and that was in your house. Um, so when they invented this type of iron stove, they could control the fire really well and they had different cooking surfaces that you could cook on, on top, inside. It was a really useful uh, cooking tool. And then the kitchen split into sections. So the person that cooked the meats was one section. The pastry chef making things over there, that was another section. And then there might be the big stove run by the head chef. So they started specializing in their jobs. And one person would make these items for the menu. And that other person made these items for the menu. Like that. Now, Marie-Antoine Carame is a famous person in culinary history uh, because as a young man, he learned all the branches of cooking and he dedicated his life to improving and inventing new cooking skills. So as he went on, he started working for increasingly wealthy and important customers until he was cooking for kings and queens. This is the Tsar of Russia. This is Na Emperor Napoleon. He cooked for both of those people. It, during his life. He was a chef who specialized in grand cuisine and it was an elaborate style of cooking that focused on making food look and taste incredible. It was difficult and it was fancy 
and he was responsible for other advancements in the culinary field, such as systems for classifying sauces, for kitchen tools, and for books. And he's considered by some to be the first celebrity chef because he was famous. Everyone knew who he was. He made a lot of money and everyone wanted him to cook for them. You know, the kitchen equipment in Carame's time looked like this. This is actually a sketch from one of his books. And this is what a kitchen looked like at that time. And you can see different people making different things in the kitchen. And, you know, he designed uh, cuisine to be more light and fresh and natural than it had been before that. It was heavy and it had lots of spices. Carame got to make the food preparations for Emperor Napoleon's wedding banquet and designed and made the wedding cake. Um, he also went and cooked for the Tsar Alexander I of Russia. And then he worked for the King of England. He cooked for the most famous people in the world. These are some pictures of the kind of designs that he made. One of his main contributions was to the chef's uniform. Carame updated the uniform and it introduced a new style of hat that was worn by chefs. It's called the toque. This form of hat is still worn by chefs today. Carame was the first chef or person to create categories of different sauces. These four, it was four sauces, now it's five, but it was four sauces and they called them the mother sauces. So they were the sauces that you could make and then from that sauce you could make even more sauces. Okay, so Auguste Escoffier is the next famous chef that you should know about and he's considered the greatest chef of his time and he's considered by many to be the father of modern cooking. He took Carame's style of cooking and he modernized it and simplified it along with adding another leading sauce to the list. So he put the fifth mother sauce on the list. He decided to write things down and make cookbooks. Escoffier was responsible for the kitchen brigade system and the creation of the classic cuisine style. Before Escoffier, the modern restaurant as we know it simply did not exist. Okay, He was a chef for 62 years and considered to be have one of the longest careers of any chef. Alongside the recipes that he wrote down, he elevated the profession. Kitchens used to be rowdy and people were drinking on their job and they were loud. And Escoffier said, you need to have cleanliness around here, quiet and discipline from the staff. And he made it into a much more respectable profession. Here's a little snapshot of what the kitchen brigade system looks like. And we're going to have another lesson on the actual kitchen brigade. Now Delmonico's is a famous restaurant in New York City that opened up in 1837. And they had luxurious private dining. They had a wine cellar with a thousand different kinds of wine. Um, they had a restaurant there that was claimed to be the first in America to use tablecloths. And its star chefs not only invented the famous Delmonico steak, but also gourmet classics like Eggs Benedict, Baked Alaska, Lobster Newburgh, and Chicken a la King were all invented at Delmonico's. It's the birthplace of the widely imitated Delmonico steak. Uh, it's also created, uh, credited with being one of the first American restaurants to allow patrons to order from the menu a la carte style as opposed to the table d'hote. That's a hard French word to say. But like I mentioned before, Delmonico's gives you a menu and you can order what you want. The restaurants before that, you had no choice. You just ate whatever they made. Delmonico's was the most fancy restaurant in the city. Uh, the richest people ate there. Here's a picture that has Mark Twain eating at Del Delmonico's, and I think you know he's a famous author, Mark Twain. Now remember, they didn't have electricity back then. Um, all of the cooking was done with a real fire inside the stove. Just imagine if you built a fire inside your kitchen stove every time you cook something. 
Uh, there were no refrigerators. Uh, they did have ice boxes and you could buy these large blocks of ice and you'd put them inside your ice box which was a cabinet and then you kept your food in there. It wasn't as cold as a real refrigerator but it was better than nothing. As technology advanced so did kitchen equipment. And as the 20th century moved along different types of restaurants were created from Delmonico's, you've got McDonald's, fast food, food trucks, different kinds of diners. And that's the end of our brief history of the culinary arts. We'll be looking at some of these different times and the different people we talked about in this lesson on their own in uh, lessons that are coming up. Thanks.